than in the, yeah, uh, well, early 80s. It's a different era. So as I said, I, I, I think in my mind, having covered Monmouth Park for 30, 30 something years, that was the golden era for jockeys at Monmouth Park. As I said, if you think about Macbeth, Craig Perrette, right after Tony, Tony won in 83, the next year Chris Antley comes along. And then right after Chris Antley wins two years before he goes away to New York, Julie Crone comes along. Uh, those were among the best jockeys in the history of Monmouth Park. Obviously, Joe Bravo's in there. He came along a lot later, but you even had guys like Rick Wilson, tough, hard guys, um, Brumfeld. They were all in that era. I thought it was yeah. a great era for jockeys, and, and Tony fit right in. Uh, what I remember about Tony, too, is uh, I'd see him almost every day. We'd say hello. Um, I would. I would. I never wanted to ask him if he was alive and anything because I didn't want to put him in a bad spot. Yeah. But every once in a while, because we got to be friendly, he would tell me. He goes, "I, I think I got a shot in this race, this race, this race." But um, always easy to talk to. Always easy to interview. Uh, as I said, in a, kind of an infectious personality because he was he was so charismatic. People here loved him. I mean, he was like the mayor when he walked down this from the uh, from the after the race from the winner's circle back to the jocks room. People would yell at Tony, good things. You know, people yeah. would, would scream at Tony because he had that effect on people. He was a, a very positive, energetic guy, and people liked him. And he had a flair. Yeah. You know, Tony had a flair about him, too. He was, like I said, he wasn't a, a passive rider. People liked that around here. So I remember, too, that he uh, he had gone away for a couple of years. I'm not sure where he went. I think during the strike year, he went to New York a little bit. Yeah, in 88. Yeah, and then I hadn't seen him for a while, and I was still covering Monmouth Park. And I remember one day... I saw him uh, walking back, and I uh, we bumped into each other. I said, "Tony, what's going on?" And it was like uh, we were all long lost friends. Yeah. You know, it was like we had never missed a day. So we caught up, and and as I said, I think being the same age as Tony, starting out in our careers together. Uh, you know, I was a sports writer; he was a writer, obviously. Um, I think that helped the connection too. Plus, him being from New Brunswick, I had just graduated Rutgers, so we talked about all these places yes, to eat in New home. Brunswick. Yeah. So it was home for him. So. Yeah. Um, but one of my favorite riders. And I, I, as I said, I covered horse racing. I probably did about 25 to 30 Kentucky Derbies and Triple Crowns. But uh, Tony Vega was one of my favorite riders.